increasing so much so that uh, we don't it's not a thing anymore it, it used to be that I know I will date myself it used to be uh, that, that people snuck around and did stuff yeah, yeah. but now they do it proud of it and dare you to say anything to them Statistics say four out of ten, four out of ten babies are, are born uh, without parents who are married together, and too often our families reject religion altogether, which means that there's certainly no spiritual head of the, the household to give godly direction. 
and we have uh, allowed all of the modern conveniences, and thank God for modern conveniences, but, but we've allowed modern conveniences and technology to provide access to, to individual uh, types of, of entertainment. So now, everybody just gets their cell phone, sit right next to one another, and everybody got their own form of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. I know, we, me and my wife, we do it sometimes. But, but but those those modern conveniences, as, as good as they are, they can draw us away from more, of one another instead of drawing us closer together. Yeah. 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 Our blessings and the blessings that we've experienced as, as a people, uh, as a people, as a nation, uh, have our blessings, we've allowed them to become a curse to us. We, we got we got more stuff than we ever had had, but but less satisfied than we've ever been. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Most of us have to decide what we're going to wear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Put it on, take it off, try something else mm -hmm. that don't look right with this. <laughs> try a different color shoe, whatever it is. We're dressed better than ever before. Yeah, yeah. But but like the lady of the church in, in Revelations, we're blind and we're wretched and we're miserable and we're naked. All right, all right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our cities are are a shambles. Yeah. It seems more people than than, than ever uh, in our cities meet meet the poverty standards. Yeah. And there are many there are many people who are working, but are the working poor. Don't earn a livable wage. And some employers still fight against that in order to, in order to fatten their own pockets and, and fatten their own profits so that those that are doing the work and the labor remain poor. Never seen so many homeless people mm -hmm. right, right, right. under the bridges and under the old, old underpasses and shelters are full. Yeah. And some of and some of these homeless people don't don't have the means and, and the wherewithal even to navigate through through uh, uh, through the, what they have to live through in order to to gain housing or employment. Yeah. They just yeah. don't have it. Our cities are engulfed with violence and crime. And there's a murderous spirit loose among us, so that now it's it's, it's not a thing. It, it, it's it's common that that every day we would hear about another shooting uh -huh. or another death. Yeah. And so often, those that are impacted are are those who are young. We would think in our mind they haven't even had a chance to live, but now their life has been snuffed out. Yeah. 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 Persons with mental and emotional problems are, are in need of help. They make up uh, some of the most uh, vulnerable people uh, around us. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I try to be careful to, when I see the people that, that, are, that are begging uh, on, on the street, uh, not to make some assumptions about who they are or where they come from. Yeah. Yeah. Addictive behaviors be, has, has May, has become a bondage to so many people that, that it can't seemingly get loose. Police shootings continue to escalate, and now there's such a mistrust among uh, communities of color against police. Then politicians who are supposed to provide some solutions are, are at the center of our nation's worst fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our homes, our, our cities, are in trouble. And the psalmist writes, except the Lord build the house. All right. And yeah. except the Lord keep the city. Right. It can't be done. All right. yeah. Personally and collectively, we, we've got enough problems to tip over a dump truck or to sink a boat. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems to work to resolve our issues. Not education, not politics, not money, not programs, not 
technology, not somebody else's ingenious uh, inventions. Not to downplay those, but they're just not enough without God. Yeah. Yeah. We need everybody's ingenious ideas. We need the best that politicians and educators uh, can give us, but we still need God first and foremost on top of all of those things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The psalm points out uh, to that indispensable element for man and for his family and for the cities, and it is the Lord. Accept the Lord. Yeah. Accept yeah. the Lord build the house, yeah. and accept the Lord keep the city. Without the Lord, we just cannot do it. And Jesus reminds us in the scripture and says, without me, you can do nothing. Yeah. All right. Amen. All right. Then in another place he says, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. And so it is that we know that, that with everything that we do to try to curb and uh, the, the violence and to make our cities more habitable and make our homes what God would have them to be. We need God first and foremost on top of everything else. Right. How does how does the Lord any work and how does the Lord intervene in the lives of, of man to help in these times of adversity? Uh, uh, he, he tells us in that first portion of verse number one except the Lord build the house they labor in vain that build it uh -huh. first first point I want to make and it's not it's not difficult to see it's plain in the scripture the first thing I want to say is that God builds God builds so first Solomon compares God to a builder of a house or a home and a home is meant to reflect the nature of Christ to glorify him. Our homes ought to be places that reflect the, the nature, the character, uh, the glory of God. The home, the home itself, the family is God's idea. So God knows how our families work best. Yeah. Yeah. He knows better than Dr. Phil, yeah. Oprah, Cosmopolitan, yeah. Ebony, and all the rest of them. Yeah. God knows how our families work best, and that's why God has given instructions for our families in Scripture. Yeah, yeah. And in Scripture, uh, just, just briefly, uh, God says through, through the apostle, he says, Husbands are to love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yeah. Wives are to, are to submit to their husbands as the church submits to Christ. Uh -huh. And then children are to obey their parents in the Lord in everything. Uh -huh. And it is with the promise and with the benefit of, of long life. Yeah. Yeah. God knows how the family works best. Uh -huh. and, and, and so, uh, yes, there, there are some, some other things to be added. But that's the structure for us to build on for our family. But, but when we reject God's command, when we reject God's structure for, for home and family, we have doomed our, our families uh, to destructive nature. We, we have walked away from God's instruction. We have walked away from God's protection. We have walked away from God's provision. And then we're on our own. And I'll tell you, on our own is not a good place to be. In, in essence, what God says, if you do it like this, then God actually builds himself into our home so that our homes become a habitation for the Lord to live in. Yeah. And, and so our, our homes don't become a place for God to live in. Yes, we want his protection and we want God's presence, but we, then we have to follow God's command. Yeah. And then if we'll follow God's command, then our homes will become a, a habitation, a dwelling place, a residence for God to live in. Physical houses are, are built with lumber and brick and metal and, and all other sorts of materials, but the real home is built on who Jesus is. Yeah. We build our homes so that they can last with love 
and with care and kindness and, and concern and righteousness and peace and joy and humility. You, you can have a, a mansion, you can live in a mansion, but the mansion can, can be full of hell and chaos if you don't build it on Christ. It, it doesn't matter how fabulous the, the, the outward structure is, if God doesn't live there, if God doesn't inhabit the place, you, you can have the best home but have the worst situation going on in, on the inside of your home. The, the fact that the Lord builds does not mean uh, that our efforts are, are not needed. It doesn't mean that that, that that we can come and say, well, 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 I gave my home to the Lord and God is building my house and I'm going to sit down here and do nothing. No, because 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 tells us that we are laborers together with the, with the Lord. Which means we have to cooperate with God's program by obedience to his word. Is there anybody in the house today? So we can't, we can't afford to get caught up in externals. God wants to shape our spirits to, to make a difference. This is the word of the Lord through his prophet Haggai. Uh, when Haggai um, and the people of that day were building a temple, they, uh, they, many of those older ones had seen Solomon's temple. And Solomon's temple was majestic. It was made of the finest wood, and all of the wood was overlaid with gold. Uh, it was expensive, and even by today's standards, I forget what the figure is, but it would have been worth more than, than I believe any 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 uh, uh, church structure or religious structure on the face of the earth even today. Everything laid with gold, and, and now in Haggai's day, they are uh, they are commissioned to rebuild the temple. They come back from uh, from their imprisonment and. Uh, and now they have to rebuild the temple and now all they have is the wood that God tells them to go get. No gold. He's not telling them to get any gold. He says, just go get the wood. He says, go up on the mountain, bring the wood and build the house and I'll take pleasure in it. He says, and in that house that you build out of that wood, I'm going to be glorified in it. He said, and I'm going to fill this house with my glory. He says, the glory of this wooden house, the, 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 the glory of this wooden church is going to be greater than the glory of Solomon's golden temple. For your home and for my home today, I, I don't want to get caught up in how it's built. I don't, I don't want to get caught up in how many rooms. I don't want to be caught up in how many square feet. I don't want to get caught up in whether it's in a gated community or whether it's in the suburbs or whether it's in the inner city or whether it's downtown. What I want to, to, to stress to us today is the fact that we need God to build our home. Yeah. And God builds up his, our homes through you and through I. That, that we would allow him, that we would give him the right of way so that he can build our home. And if he builds our homes, then our homes can last. Yeah. Isn't that the, that's the picture, that, that is the lesson uh, from uh, the Matthew chapter number 7 where Jesus gives this parable that one man built his house, but he built it on the sand. And one man built his house, but he dug down deep until he hit a rock, and then he built his home. Yeah. But, but, but here it comes the adversity, and here comes the storm, and here comes, just like today, the storms that, that hit the house. Yeah. And when the storm came and hit the house, the, the house that was built on the sand, it fell, and great was the fall of it. Yeah. But, but the home that was built on the rock, withstood the storm and continued to stand because it was founded upon a rock. And that rock symbolizes Christ Jesus. Yeah. And for you and I, for our homes to make it, they need to be built on Christ Jesus. Yeah. God builds today. God builds our homes. God builds people. God builds neighborhoods yeah. so that they can last, so that they can endure. There, there's nothing worse than, than buying a home and then finding out that the home has been built with inferior materials or, or finding 
finding out that somebody just threw your house together and now you have to have somebody come in and redo the structure because they didn't care how they built it. But God cares how he builds and God makes sure that the house that he builds, the home that he builds, can withstand the storms of life. And today, the storm winds are blowing and God wants your house and my house to withstand. Today, many, many homes are falling because they're not built on a rock. They're built on something else. They, they were built quick. They were built on the sand. They were built with not much effort and no sacrifice and no dedication and no commitment. So now when the storms winds blow, then uh, folks start leaving the house saying, I got to go. I can't stand it no more. You know, you done got on my last nerve. That's it. I got to go, get the papers ready, see the lawyer. All this is gone for good. I can, and, and people leave saying, I can get another one. But God knows our homes to stand. Today, God builds. Can somebody say that God builds? Secondly, God watches. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waits, but in vain. So secondly, God compares God to a watchman. Mm -hmm. He's the security. He's the guard. Yeah. And because we live in dangerous times, we need somebody to watch over us. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yes, please lock your door and turn the alarm on. on. Draw down the shades. <laughs> if you got the dog, put the dog on, a, on alert. Whatever you have to do, keep yourself safe. But, but, but I want to make sure when, when everything else is, is in place, that God's watching. We, we got house alarms, and we got security cameras, we got guard dogs, and we got phones that will operate our house when we're miles away. You, you know, it, it, it's simply amazing to me. You can turn your lights on and lock the doors and, and, and turn the lights on and, and draw down the shades and everything else with your phone miles away. And in order to, to, to make it as secure as possible. It's wonderful. And we do all that and sometimes we still don't feel secure. Got a vicious dog that'll jump at anybody. But, but still don't feel secure. It is, but it's good to know uh, uh, apart from all of those things that God is watching yeah. Yeah. and that God is watching over us. Yeah. Nothing and nobody goes unnoticed by God. Yeah. Proverbs 15 and 3 tells us that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Yeah. That God sees everything. Absolutely everything. So it doesn't matter if, if the shades were drawn and the lights and the lights were out, God still sees in the dark. Yeah. And so we can't hide from, from God, and, and that's that's good in, in that respect, but it's also good that God sees us when we need his protection. Yeah. Yeah. In Psalm 121 and 8 that tells us the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The, the Lord uh, watches us over us, not just to spectate, not just to see, but he watches over us to protect us and to preserve us. Yep. It is one thing to watch, but it's one thing to watch with the intention to do something when it's when when it's needed. Amen. Right. You know that that that, that is, that's the knock on some security guards. Because some people see a security guard and they see they ain't got nothing on them. And they, what they call them? Uh, uh, you know, you, you, yeah, you're not the real thing. <laughs> yeah. All you got is a telephone yeah. or a walkie talkie. Right. Yeah. But, but, but I'll, if, I, if I hire somebody to, to protect me, I want, I want to make sure that they're loaded and they got something on them. <laughs> that they can do something in case something jumps off. But thank God for, as God's people, we are assured of God's watchful care over us. Yeah. It says in Psalm 34 and 15, the, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Mm -hmm. So for you and I, God's eyes are open 
open and, and, and on us, but, but his ears are also open to hear our cry. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And thank God that, that, that he can do something about the situation. He watches with the intent to preserve and to yeah. protect. Yeah. Yeah. And so God is not, not just watching, he watches to protect us. Uh, Psalm 30, 84 tells us, uh, uh, behold, the, the Lord God is a son give light yes. and to give light. He's a sun and he's a shield to protect us. The Lord God is a sun and a shield and he will give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That, that God watches over us to protect us. Yeah. And, and, and most of us have had the opportunity to see our parents uh, portray that godly character over our life that that when we were especially when we were too young to get away that they kept us in eyesight uh -huh. that, that even when we were in the yard playing and, and they were on the inside of the house they still had their eye on us uh -huh. so when we got ready to to, to jump the fence or to sneak away, they called out to us Amen. to protect us. Yeah, yeah. Or when we were in danger or when they thought that we were going to do something that would harm us, they would call out to us to protect us. Yeah. And so it is with God that he watches over us to protect us. Yeah. And now, in this day, we got the police and the FBI and the CIA and the armed forces and special ops, and, and they're all really useless without the Lord. Yeah. Thank God for them. I want them to be on their post. If I call 911, I want the police there in a hurry. Yeah. I want them there and ready to, to act. But, 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 but before they get there, I know that God watches over his yeah. own. And so I'm thankful, and as a nation today, we can see the futility of our human efforts. Amen. We need the watchful eye of the Lord upon us. Yeah. Yeah. And now, some people are afraid to call the police because we're afraid of what the police will do when they get there. Yeah. But, but, but God won't ever harm us like that. God won't ever hurt us like that. God is watching over us to care for us. And, and Paul himself was confident of God's watchfulness in his case. He said, for I, I, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that. He's able to preserve that which I have committed unto him against that day. He knew that in whom he had his trust and he knew that God would preserve him and protect him. God watches. God not only builds, but once God builds, then he watches over it to keep it safe. So for, for your life and for my life, in the middle of the storms of, of this day in which we live in today, I'm glad that yes, God builds, but after he builds, God will watch over us and God will keep us and God will preserve us and God will protect us. Why is it, why is it, why is it that, 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 that this is done? He, he, he gives, uh, in verse number two, the, 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 the last point, he says, it's vain for you. He's already said it's vain without the Lord. But now he says, it's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. The, the last point is that God gives rest. God gives rest. In, in our text, verse 1 warns us against being overly confident in our own efforts in excluding the Lord. So, so, so the warning in verse number 1, don't, don't build on your own without the Lord. Don't, don't pretend to watch on your own without the Lord. You need the Lord to build and you need the Lord to watch. But verse 2 warns us against the frustration and anxiety of work and forfeiting the, the, the benefit of God's rest. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes we do everything in our power and then uh, we allow uh, anxiety and frustration to plague us so that we can't even enjoy uh, what we've allowed God to build and watch over. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that sometimes our worry and, and the stress 
we, we've done all that we should do. We depend on God and then we sit and we worry about what, what we have placed in the Lord's hand. Come on, will somebody be truthful with me today? I'm not the only one, am I? That, that's, that sometimes we do all that we're supposed to do and, and if we're not careful, we won't, we won't sit and relax. We won't sit in peace. We will sit and worry about it. Yeah. 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 So let me just force it uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God in the peace of God. The peace of God will keep, will guard your heart and your mind. He says in this in this second verse, it's vain for you. It is useless. It's worthless. It's futile. It's unsuccessful for you to 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 to, to wake up, to rise up early, and to sit up late. Uh -huh. Now that is crazy. <laughs> If, if I rise up early, I'm, pro I'm, pro I'm probably not going to stay up late. Yeah, I, I'm either going to do one or the other. But, but I'm not going to usually, you know, go to bed late and then rise up early. That's a Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's, that's a different story. But he said, it is, it is futile, it's vain for you to rise up early and then stay up, stay up late. And, and eat the bread of sorrows while you do it. He says, because the same God who builds and the same God who watches is the same God that will give you rest. Will somebody say rest today. No matter how hard we work or how much we give, if, if we don't allow God to build a house and watch the city, it's for nothing. It's, it's vain. When he says sleep here, he's, he's talking about rest. Yeah. It's talking about rest and peace from God. Yeah. In, any research re regarding physical rest, when we when we sleep at night, uh, will will tell us. Any research will tell us that the benefits of sleep are are tremendous. It, it, it helps our physical ability. Mm -hmm. it, it, it helps. Uh, it helps our heart. Mm -hmm. It helps our circulation. Yeah. It, it helps to relieve stress and anxiety. That's, right. that, that's why we ought to go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. stay up all night. All right. Because <laughs> some of us ain't even yet, as young as we used to be. Yeah. All right. yeah. Yeah. You need some sleep. Some of us, as we get older, we, we need about as much sleep as, as, as little babies need. That's right. Rest results in healthier heart, better weight control. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Sharper brain function. But, but then rest from the Lord results, uh, benefits us in much the same way. When we allow ourselves to rest in the Lord, it will help us physically and emotionally and psychologically in every way when we allow ourselves to find the peace of God in our life. God tells Israel in, in Exodus 33, uh, and he, he, he threatened first that he won't go with them, and, and then he relents and, 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 and speaks to, to Moses. He says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Yeah, yeah. To those people that were traveling, to those people in the wilderness, they needed God's rest for their life. They, 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 this was something new to them. They've been in bondage for so long, and now uh, they, they've gotten out of bondage. They they have crossed the Red Sea. They watched Pharaoh and his army drown, and, and now they're marching towards that, that, that promised land for them. This is new territory. It's uncharted. Uh, they don't have map. They don't have GPS. Uh, you know, they, they, they don't have the, the brochure that tells them about all of the luxuries of the promised land. They ain't got none of that stuff. They just got to go wherever the cloud leads them to go. But, but, but God assures them that I'm going to go with you. My presence will go with you and I will give you peace. 
and, and most of us, we need the peace of God more than we need anything else in our life. Christ gives us an invitation for you and I, even as we come to him. His invitation is to come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke. He says, yes, you still got the work. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. He says, now you're going to work, but my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. He says, I'm not going to put too much on you. I'm not going to overburden you. I'm not going to beat you down at every step in your, in your work, in your labor, in your ministry, and in your service. I'm going to give you rest. Will somebody say rest? Yes. The, the power of rest is evident in those who trusted in God. In Acts chapter number 12, uh, Herod has put has found Peter. He's already killed James and now he's put Peter in jail and he's got four quaternions of soldiers that are guarding him and, and in the prison cell itself uh, here is Peter and he's chained to two soldiers and then he's got guards on the outside of the door uh, and then, then as Peter sleeps that night, isn't it amazing uh, that, that, that he knows that his, his neck is the next one on the chopping block and yet he's found sleep that night. Uh, it, it's amazing because uh, sometimes the smallest things can keep us awake and, and, and the small things can trouble us to the point where we can't find rest. But there he awaits his certain death, but yet he finds sleep. He finds rest between these soldiers. But that night, as the church was somewhere praying, the, the, the God dispatched the angel of the Lord and the angel of the Lord came that night into that prison cell right. and, and without disturbing the guards and, and without any of uh, the other uh, things that could have made that seem chaotic, he comes and wakes Peter up and his chains fall off and the doors open and Peter don't know if it's a dream or he's awake but, but the angel leads him out without a fight, without a scuffle, without anything. Evidently, the guards were immobilized or, or, or sleep or whatever. But, but God, the angel led him out. There he found rest in the jail and got out and even went to the place where the saints were praying. And while the saints were praying and asking the Lord to free Peter and get him out of jail, Peter comes knocking on the door because the same Lord that builds and the same Lord that watches is the same Lord that will get you rest. They don't even believe it. When she tells them Peter's at the door, they say, no, girl, you done seen a ghost. But that was Peter at the door because God watches and God builds and God will give you rest. Isn't it amazing that, that, that God will, will give us rest in the most uh, inopportune times that, that, that when the storms are raging and when danger is upon us, that God can give us rest. It is, a, it is assumed that, that when they threw Daniel in the lion's den because he prayed uh, during that time that the king gave the commandment not to pray to anybody but him, that, that then at that time that Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Have you ever read the description of a lion? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen a lion up close? Yeah. It's ferocious enough just to look at. You know, television and movies, I don't think, give lions justice. If they can be eight feet, feet long, if they can weigh 400 or, or so pounds, if their paws can be eight to, eight to 12 inches and claws on top of that and the big fangs in their mouth, listen, that, that's no place seemingly to take a nap. But, but that's where Daniel found his rest that night when they threw him in the lion's den. And yet he said that, that God had shut the lion's jaws. And so he, 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 he felt the comfort of God enough to lay there in the lion's den. And when the king came, 
and saw that Daniel was alive, he got him out. And the ones that conspired against Daniel, he threw them in. And the same lions who, whose jaws were shut when Daniel was in the lion's den, they opened their mouths when those others were thrown in. And the scriptures give a, a description of, of their jaws crushing those men's bones and, and destroying them and mutilating them. The same ones, uh, the same lions that were tamed for Daniel, they became vicious when those others were thrown in. That's because where God builds, he also watches and then gives rest. Jesus exemplifies it in the storm on the sea when he's out there with his disciples and the winds are blowing and the disciples don't know what to do and they wake Jesus up and say, don't you care today if we perish in this storm? And Jesus simply rises up because he is the, the personification of, of God in bodily form. He just simply goes and speaks to the winds and the waves that he created and said, peace, be still. And the same waves that were crushing up against the ship, they calmed down and the storm ceased and they made it to their destination safely. I'm telling you today that no matter how bad it gets in this world, God still builds. He don't go out of business. God still watches. His eyes are still open and God still gives rest. Won't you take a, a, a nap and go ahead and go to sleep, get some shut eye, and trust God to keep you, and trust God to protect you, and trust God to make a way, and trust God to see you through, trust God for your journey, no matter how bad it gets on the job, or in the community, or, in, or at home, God can still keep us, and God can still protect us. It's not too hard for God to do. It may be too hard for you and I, but nothing is too hard for God. And that's why I'm glad he hears the cry of his people. That's why I'm glad where he builds and watches, and then he'll give peace today. Thank God he can make a difference. He can make a way. He can turn it around because there's nothing too hard for God except the Lord build the house. The, the, they build in vain and accept the Lord keep the city. The watchman is awake in vain. Today, I want us to trust God. I want us to trust God that He'll build, that He'll watch, that He'll give rest. Come on, give God a praise. Let's we'll, we'll we'll just stand to you. Thank God for the opportunity today and thank God for His Word. Sometimes just the simplest things from God make all of the difference in the world. It doesn't have to be so deep you can't understand it. It doesn't have to be necessarily Hebrew or Greek. Can you just tell me something plain about God? That God does build, that God watches, and that God gives rest. The people of God have special promises from God. That, that those outside of the ark of safety cannot depend on. God's promise to his people is that he will never leave us and that he will never forsake us so that we can boldly say that the Lord is my helper. I won't fear what any man shall do to me. These are the days that we need God's help and God's provision for our life. And unless you're blind and unless you have just turned turned off everything you need God's help today Amen. Thank you. these are tumultuous times that we live in but, but, but God knows and God cares so today I would encourage you if you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and your 
Savior, that today you would make that commitment, that you make that decision today, that by faith you will trust Christ's sacrifice on Calvary to be the payment for your sin. And then you'll make him the master of your life. That you will follow his word. That you'll obey his word. Live according to his word. He wants to save you. He wants to keep you. He wants to deliver you. Now, right now, today. And for all of eternity. Save now. Being saved in process will be saved for eternity. Somebody wants to be saved. You want to accept Jesus, you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today. Won't you where you are just raise your hand? Whether in the sanctuary or viewing virtually, won't you raise your hand today? special prayer, if you've been going through something, if you've been dealing with something, you know, some of the storms of life have been plaguing you and troubling you, you need God's help, you need his rest, won't you just raise your hands where you are, a special prayer today, let us pray, our dear Holy God, Lord, we thank you and we praise you today for this time spent in your house. Lord, we thank you for those who raised their hands for special prayer today. Lord, we pray that you will keep, that you will build, that you will watch, and then give the assurance, Lord, that you give rest, you give your peace, Lord, for your people today. We confess, Lord, we can do nothing without you. But with you all things are possible. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of your word, of your presence with us now. God, go with us. Guide us and protect us and bless us as we go. We thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. And thank you, Lord, for what you will do even in the days ahead. Keep us in your care for those, Lord, who need of your healing touch on their bodies. Today, Lord, I pray that God, you will touch and heal, Lord, as only you can. We trust you today, Lord. No matter what the problem is, no matter what the diagnosis is, Lord, today we trust you, Lord, to heal. And then, Lord, we pray that you will keep us in every situation. In our homes and on the jobs, that God, you would intervene to help us, to help us to make it, to help us to endure, to help us, Lord, to be patient and to wait on you. Lord, we thank you already for what you're going to do. Give us, your, Lord, your peace as we wait. Give us, Lord, your rest as we wait. We do love you, Lord. We already give you praise. We give your name the glory and honor. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. Come on, thank you. You may be seated. Thank God for time in God's house. Thank God for each one of you that are here. I uh, want to encourage those that are doing virtually. Continue to uh, access our website and join us uh, each Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, thank you for joining us today. As well, on the website, you can uh, find information regarding the church as well as how to give to the church. Uh, addresses there. As well as the mechanism for giving. The website is ocognd.org, ocogindy.org. Let's give God praise and thank God for those of you that are virtually today. Praise God. Thank God for you.